everybody, and welcome to the Medivac Podcast. I'm your host, Christian Myers, joined by my co-host today, David Hey, Reed. guys. Back again with another episode of uh, One Ginger, Two Amputees. Oh, uh, we got two amputees today. Yeah. How many legs do we have at this table, yeah, four Christian? Four total. Four, four total legs. Actually... Two souls, four <laughs> legs. <laughs> Our guest today, Derek Carver, was a uh, infantry officer in the Army, Ranger Qualified, he lost his uh, leg in 2010 to a uh, an accident. We're going to get into the details a little bit more later, but welcome, Derek. Thanks for being on. Thanks for being on the show, brother. Except Look at that epic It, it beard. wasn't an accident. Oh. It was an act of war, intentional purpose. Yes. No this accident. Is, yeah, there's no accident. Uh, this is fair. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you Some said. old lady hit me one time. That was an <laughs> I got into a hot tub. My, my ex-girlfriend accidentally punched me in the face one time. <laughs> yeah. So those were accidents. Poor choice of words, yeah, no, Christian. Just yeah. like, like, my the, one, the one thing that like just like, swallow, dude, it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it's it. An it's an accident. Accident. No, no, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. How many people say that kind yeah, of thing all the time? Yeah, you know, it, it's, I think now people kind of get it that we've been riding this ride for 20 years, yeah. but the fact that like when it first happened in 2010, before it was sexy to be an amputee and everybody was like, uh, I think it happened more. <laughs> was it sexy? I think it's, you I think, know, was, I think there's, there's a point where it's sexy to be like an amputee. Like, if, yeah. like it just, I don't know, look at simple things as like Instagram followers. Like there's a difference between being like, a BK because you were congenial or di- uh, like missing it doing pull-ups and then like if you were like combat wounded like I just yeah. and I think it's not a bad thing I think that it's just because of the experience and the reason behind the amputation that drives the, yeah, the, the curiosity story. to follow yeah but I mean to pretend it doesn't exist I think is naive too agreed yeah agreed yeah. My great, man. I feel, no. I feel like a dick now. Like, you know, you're only making yourself look you know like I mean? a dick to our audience, <laughs> yeah. which is great. And I, we we're didn't nice talk about people. cussing either, so yeah. like, heads You're good. Yeah. You're good. Just Don't like, worry about the cussing. Beep, Whatever you want. Beep, yeah. So did you always know you were going to be in the military yeah, when you were a kid? Yeah, that was that guy. You were that like, guy. Like in kindergarten, first grade, they, you know that shitty brown paperwork that has like the... The like dotted lines in between the lines, and you use it for handwriting. Yeah, yeah. A little kid, like we had that. I remember that with like an open spot in the corner, and it was printed on recycled, like the yeah, horrible eighties brown paper, nineties. Yeah. Uh, like it said, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And I just drew like like a stick figure dude holding a rifle, and then it said "Army Ranger," and like I, oh. I processed that way. So I never quite. I, I got ta- I got the tab. I just never got the scroll. Oh, we'll get into that yeah, here yeah, a little bit. We'll get into yeah, that. Yeah. We got the thing. Like the expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel to be a fail? No, just no. <laughs> so how does it feel to just your entire dreams, hopes, and dreams from being a five year old kid just never accomplished? Yeah, just, see, really? like, it's just left thanks, open. Taliban, yeah. ripped away by saying. your horrendous just, accident. Just your inability happened. to follow through in a more direct and timely fashion. So like, you really no, let yourself fine. down. Yeah, That's no, what, what I'm hearing. I'm not a statistic yet. So. <laughs> it's still early. I know, right. Like, there's yeah. tons of life. Yeah. You're still young. Yeah. 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 I'm like 38. A lot there's of a failures. Solid 15 to 20 years of just n- almost not making it. <laughs> you got some time left. Yeah. Yeah. So in kindergarten, you knew what you wanted to do, Army Ranger, and that's why you checked out the Air Force recruiting office. Right? <laughs> no, absolutely. Actually, it's weird because I actually enlisted in the Air Force, like fresh out, and that got more into like real life circumstances. Like, I went to college. I was like doing football. Like I was an athlete the whole time. Military is always like an afterthought for like when my sports career at five foot eight doesn't yeah. <laughs> manifest. <laughs> five nine on a dating app, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, how you look at it, whatever. Five nine five on a dating app matters. You know, like just say five eight and a half. What I'd give for half. The much. half is for myself. I, I prefer to round up. No, it's I absolutely one hundred percent. So five nine. Yeah. There I am, five, yeah. Nine. Here I am, five eleven. <laughs> give no, or take three inches. Five nine rounds up to six foot real quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm shorter now because of the accident. Right, no, but if I was like a double amputee, for sure I would have been six foot tall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Without it. it was, and there's, I've actually met a guy, yeah. like a pro wakeboarder that did. He's like, I'm six one. I was like, bro, like, he's like, I was only five, five. Like, I'm long. I was like, five, five. Bro, when you I went, started. he's like, added seven inches. He had no shame. He tells people, he goes, you'd add seven inches if you could too. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, so, and that's a good I thing would, to clarify. That's a good thing to clarify to our audience. If you're a double amputee, you get to essentially choose your height. You got to be careful with the arms, though. Because, like, I feel like some dudes get to that where they got, they're like all legs and T Rex arms, and it's just too obvious. Yeah. 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 I would go for short it. Arms. I think I would yeah. too. I got legs for days, yeah, baby. She's like staring at my legs. She doesn't yeah. give a shit about my arms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm six foot five. No big deal. Yeah. yeah. Men get that. So, how did you transition from like being that Army Ranger when you were in uh, kindergarten to let's go with the Air Force? So, like, so court. 
No. Oh. <laughs> And I believe it, too. I had to, like, legitimately just get into the military as fast as possible. And, like, w given where we were and the recruiters and friends, like, as cheesy as it sounds, it's like, the Air Force, like, reserves it was, like, the fast, like, hey, bro, like, we got a spot. And this is, like, when there was a wait list. Because I was like, all right, well, maybe the Marine Corps, but fuck that three-mile run. Yeah. I was like, I guess I can do the Army, but, like, I'm really not excited I about mean, it. you were in sports. Three-mile run got to you or what? Uh, I played college ball at 315 pounds. Oh, God man, damn. you're yeah, a big boy. I was like a pass rush machine. Yeah. Like, just eight double teams. Like, <laughs> double double cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah, like, I got, I got, I got yeah. blocked all the time. I, damn. I just set myself up for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter I got now. double teams all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I joined the Navy. Yeah. So the yeah. Navy was a real viable yeah. option. Yeah. Oh, I hate the yeah. water, man. Like, I didn't want anything to do with you it. Going in the swim. water. Like, I'm that guy that if I can't clearly see the bottom, yeah. I don't want to do it. But hey, let's go on a boat. I'm like, yeah, I saw the Titanic. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to be that close to you. Different Two circumstances. Like right. Yeah. There's no icebergs out here, but shit happens. Oh, man. I just don't like to be automatically at the bottom of the food chain. We have, we have a buddy who's planning a sailing trip through the Drake's Passage oh. into Antarctica right now. Yes, and I... Yeah, Dave's been invited. Well, we've both been invited. As the land navigator. <laughs> I was like, who's, what who's running this trip? <laughs> like, you need a I land suppose. navigator, man? Like, that's cool. You got yeah. your, like, green compass. I'm like, there's yeah. no land. My job <laughs> is not complete. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so as a land navigator, it's that way, generally. Yeah. Wait a minute. I, Do you think I that heard he... that and it sounded fucking... Scary. Do you First, think that he like invited me on boat. because yeah. I have one leg and he wants me on the the freaking? No, bro, oh, you're yeah. free. Just you're to not say land your ho? Lieutenant Dan mo we, moment. You're just you're like you know the free what? PR. I'm you're just, just like the, the you're just the shiny object, bro. <laughs> He's like <laughs> me and my one leg and army vet that lost it in war are gonna go do this. I know thing. this is Dave. He's got one leg. I'm not even. I'm not even a sailor. He loves this shit. He lives for it. This is therapy. It saved his life. Fourteen. I just need to train a parrot. No, one hundred percent. Yes. Perch on my shoulder, I'm good to go. I would show up in full Blackbeard outfit, and he's like, "What the fuck?" Be like, "Bro, you said take this serious." <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was going a different direction. Bro, like, That's you my said bad. Get ready, and yeah. I've just rewatched the Pirates of the Caribbean series like <laughs> yeah. 15 times. Yeah. I've been brushing up <laughs> on my doing this, my pirate lore. <laughs> Matey, <laughs> Matey, mate. Yeah, so, the poop so you go into the recruiting office for the Air Force, and you decide it's not for you. Or no, what? I actually went in and enlisted, went to basic AIT, and then realized that I was like just didn't have the interpersonal skill set to fit in. I wasn't adjusting well. It might have just been the military. It might have just been the person it's in the leadership at that time. It might have just been the Air Force. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just I remember Force. when they first changed the, Air, the PT test. Like I was a big kid, but I still maxed the PT test, and then they did my height and weight. Your and BMI. My yeah. my waist was like. 36 inches, so like, you fell. Yeah, it's you're like, too fat. But my body fat percentage is like 15. Yeah. <laughs> so like, they're like, yeah, but that doesn't matter in the Air Force, just the real military. Yeah. And like, so I just immediately... Yeah, we don't, we don't want the 315-pound beast of a tank on the battlefield. Yeah. Like, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I'd be like, sign this guy up right away. Yeah, well, hey, I don't Give know. Give him the battle axe. I, no, I lost, I lost 100 pounds in six months before I joined the military. Damn. Oh, wow. Like, before Instagram. Like back, in, like, <laughs> couldn't document it. Like in two thousand, like five, like January two thousand five, mm -hmm. I dropped out of college. Uh, it was like three hundred fifteen pounds. Just quit playing football, and I actually moved home. And it was like I'm gonna give myself six months to figure out my life. And that's when like I lost a hundred pounds. Nice. I uh, joined the Air Force at that time, <laughs> and then immediately like did that process. Got out and then went into the army, realizing I only had you know, one semester of college before I graduated, before I dropped out, you know, uh, they're like, hey, bro, you should go commission. And I was like, yeah. Like, fuck it, why YOLO, not? YOLO, why not? Yeah. yeah. And it worked out. I ended up, was supposed to get a master's commissioned early because I didn't want to miss the war in 2007. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I made mean. my way through the officer basic training requirements. So you never, you were never actually enlisted for any duration of time? No, or? that's oh. the weird thing. It's like, I was like, I did basic, I did AIT. I did like uh, three or four months like enlisted. I, oh, I like, I even got promotion orders. Like, I, I mean, the total, I was enlisted for like two years total. Yeah. But it was like the way everything transitioned out. Just like, through training. It was just training. Yeah, it was just yeah. training and no like real life shit. Yeah. And then I commissioned and went through another year of training. And then I life got real, real fast. Yeah. So you, <laughs> and then it, and then it, it all caught up to me. <laughs> did you go? to ranger school fairly quickly after oh, that? Oh, it was, it's all required, yeah. Like, you, as an infantry officer, um, like, you commission, you end up going, at that time, you went to Bullock 2, which was just, like, the transition course. 
Then you went to Bullock three, which was your specialty course. For me, it was IOBC at Binning. Okay. That's like like eight months. Like that's a uh, it's like six months, six or seven months. And then yeah. from there, if you're not airborne qualified, you go to airborne school. It's just all that Ranger school. school. And yeah. then I did airborne. I went. I did. Yeah, it was like a solid twelve months. I went IOBC. And then I immediately went to airborne school, and then I went to mech leaders because I was assigned to a heavy unit at the mm. time. Uh, or and then I went to ranger school after that because okay. I got reassigned to the eighty. And what year was that? That was two thousand. That was like seven and seven, eight. Okay, I reported to my unit like nice. I commissioned in shit December of two thousand seven. So it was all of two thousand eight was all training. Two thousand nine, I reported to my unit. Okay, and God, you must have been blown up. crazy. Butter bar running around. Uh, <laughs> I can't yeah, imagine. Yeah. I don't think I had a lot of friends, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can imagine. I was just like, uh, I can like, imagine. Unrefined. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is refined. So, like, you can imagine. Like, I just, uh, growing up in the background and stuff that I had is just not, you develop a strong personality and yeah. necessity. And it's just yeah. the experiences that you have with the things that you're going through in life as you're dealing with different problems and like, the the mechanisms that I had in place growing up, not a lot of male role models moving mm -hmm. a lot and like yeah. just compromised like, you know, childhood, I guess, compared to what most people would consider it. Just kind of left that and I, it took a lot. It took getting blown up and going through 10 years of like learning how to walk again, mm -hmm. having 60 surgeries and shit like that before I actually was able to reflect back and extract the things I was meant to learn from those yeah. moments mm -hmm. and then apply them to my life because yeah. I was just so angry, bitter, and jaded about the why me and the yeah, of course. everything involved in it. Everybody yeah, goes yeah. through that phase. Yeah, moment, normal. Man. Mine just lasted 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a guy with a lot of trust behind yeah, you, right? Well, I was, mean, you know, the five years in the Army weren't very good either. No, I mean, I had yeah. loved my career. It was a great job. I had a great time. Uh, I wouldn't change a thing of it in the world. I just mm -hmm. would have, I don't know, man, I would have like been more personable with my soldiers. Sure. You know, and just stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you think of that yeah. in hindsight. You know, right, I, yeah. I do that to myself all the time. I, I always think, like, I would be a much better operational leader mm -hmm. knowing what I know now than I did when I was freaking 20 years old. Bro, if I, know, if I knew, <laughs> uh, if I could take what I know now and put it in my 18-year-old head, bro, I'd uh, say, uh, I'd yeah. play the world. That's what Elon Musk did. He just found yeah. a way to reboot in the Matrix, and that's where he's at now. Yeah, he put that, He's like, back. I want to be the richest man in the fucking world, and I want to go to space and shit. Like, yeah. boom. And now done. he's doing it. Yeah, I just want to know how I get on that bandwagon. I want to go to bro, space. You have to bro. be like, space ranger. You have to be, you have to be bro. You have to be like <laughs> crazy savant smart. Like you, yeah. you have to be socially compromised in know, order to be SpaceX that guy. SpaceX just did a random. Uh, they did a random lottery and just let random civilians. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. But yeah, because you, that's how Elon thinks, though. Like yeah. he like he doesn't think Fucking on normal awesome. thought process. He's like, hey, like I could literally change three people's life right now. I'm yeah. just you know, a shout out to great PR. Uh, yeah. Elon is come on, man. You know, we have some veterans here. Hey, bro, want to go to you space? can literally yeah. send like two for the price of one and a third. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got ample leg room. That's well, what I'm saying. Like, yeah. stop. You can get like a like a nah, Derek man, space suit. It's a quarter off, off right? It's like, twenty five. You, you go on your table. Stuffing like little Do it. like Do uh, it. little yeah. people in places where legs should be. We could double and triple down with the amount. Of I know space. you could go in my leg area. Like yeah. I'll just, just sit there. Yeah, I'll just, just stuffy in the corner. We man, your space suit's a little cheaper. He's gonna beat me up now, right? Yeah. <laughs> You'd save some money. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's by the pound. Like, I'm 40 pounds off. Bro. True story. Like, True I haven't story. had to pay full price for a pedicure in a decade. Like, try to charge me full price on <laughs> You know, that's another good point, too. Are you getting half off? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, there's you goddamn well. deals. No, I've actually, <laughs> no, I've actually had, like, I was at one in, in, in Michigan and uh, went in and a very nice Vietnamese family. Like, they helped us, and, like, the husband was oblivious to the fact that I just really had one foot. So, like, I went to pay, and he was going to charge me full rate for me and my girlfriend and his wife. Lost it. <laughs> I don't speak Vietnamese, but I understood what she was saying. <laughs> Wait, this is a restaurant? Context. No, this is, like, a, like a, uh, pedicure, a place? pedicure place. Oh, okay. Did I say a restaurant? Uh, I was going to say, like, I, I don't know where this no, discount applies. No, this is at a applies. pedicure place. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> so we were talking about pedicures, so I just... Just, like, at a restaurant, though? Like, I just, you turned it. It went from pedicures to the eating. But, like, he tried to charge full price, and his wife lost it. And, like, you could tell he was just, like, and he came around the corner, and he looked, and he bowed, and then he, like, tried, he tried to give it to me free, so I tipped. It was just That's awkward, funny. but, like, well-meaning. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. no, I've never been don't charged you? full. Actually, I get, like, it's super convenient, man. I don't get speeding tickets, knock on wood. Like, people look at me, and they, they're, like, they assume I'm a criminal based on how I look, so they don't talk to me. Or they're just, like, they assume I'm, like, Lieutenant Dan, so they don't talk to me. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. It's, nice. it's nice. People, it's people leave me to alone. not have yeah. people talk to <laughs> just, me. That is good when your friends go to bat for you, though, and and stick up for you, right? Yeah. 
No, or even, that's nice. So even you're not the bad guy. Owners. Yeah, no, that's yeah. pretty nice of them to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I remember I was just telling him the other day that I was at a like a veteran concert. They they did a shout out for veterans. They were, you know, in the audience, blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I like was walking by and I this lady literally was like, why are you walking right now? You should show respect <laughs> to the American heroes in this world. And I just looked at her <laughs> like so taken aback. <laughs> and my buddy walks up and he's like, well... He did lose this his leg for this country, so maybe. And then, sure, her face was just like, yeah. "Oh yeah, like, I, it happens all the time." Yeah. Oh, I've had people come up and handicap like, spots. Ha- oh, I was walking happened in yesterday. pants. Happened I was, yesterday. I was walking in pants on a military base, and some old man creeped up next to me, like drive by style, and was like, "You should be ashamed of yourself." So I just undid my belt and dropped my pants yeah. and looked, and I was like, "Anything else, old man?" He's like, <laughs> "He like literally drove around, parked, and he found me in the store and apologized." Like yeah. that's, oh, it's, that's that's nice. Like, that's what you get for making assumptions. He'll yeah. never do it again, never though. Never once. He'll yeah. never do it and again. And like, the best part is when people come up, because I do this too. I'll call people out. I'm like, hey, bro, are you disabled? Or are you just parking in the spot for convenience? Will you? Yeah. yeah fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course you will. Like, uh, I'll be that guy all day. Well, oh, no, 100%. Like, I, like, gone to court over it and stuff. <laughs> because people are like, he he approached me dangerously. He's like, no, nah, I just oh, said, bro- hey, bitch, what are you parking in the handicap spot for? <laughs> like this, that's how your your normal conversation though is just naturally aggressive. So. I can't help the like. Look, me a thousand years ago wouldn't make it in society. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, like, you would. I, no, I bet you would. You would. Have a battle axe. I, I'd be the, yeah. I'd be like I'd be like the low. Like everybody else is much more aggressive. They just assume like I like. Okay, look, I'm look muscles, tattoos. It's it's intimidating. I get it. Like yeah. I'm not a criminal. No. You know what I mean? Like. I get it. There's a beard. Like, it's I mean, the voice, like, It's too. the way you look. Okay, it's so the that voice, was the voice. Too. Right, yeah, so I'm yeah. just the epitome of toxic masculinity according you are. to stereotypes. Let me man explain this to you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> In that fanny pack, do you have a go beer, though? No. If you have a go beer at all times. What the hell is a go beer? You know, just ready to you go. Know, oh, I don't drink. Brewski. I don't drink. Oh. Do I lose my bro card? So, so I that, haven't drank in like eight, nine years. That's a Man. good plug. He's not a criminal and he doesn't drink. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I work in nonprofit space. <laughs> like, uh, all I do is help people. Uh, like, disabled, I just want to help special you. Special needs. Ma'am. Like, you need this help. <laughs> Give me the fucking money. This is for your for own these guys. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to get political. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't you let me help you? <laughs> let me no. help you. Put this on. Listen to this guy. So can you walk us through a little bit of your... Of, of how it was after training in the military? Like, what was your job consisting uh, of? Like, and then leading up to deployment? As a, oh, I reported the 82nd, mm-hmm. and like, you get in, and it's just like, you're, like, I kind <laughs> of understood what it meant because I, like, spent nominal time enlisted. You know what I mean? Like, so I kind of understood that side yeah. from, like, a very low level perspective. And then coming in and having a low level officer perspective, I'm like, <laughs> we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> So we're not because yeah. like and it's and it's actually kind of shitty because you you get like you're gonna be alone and then you're not gonna have but and like you you talk and have this but there's always that like just decision there and you're always constantly thinking like I just didn't want to compromise my decision making mm. pro- like process through like personal relationships and stuff and it yeah. reflected and it's just like one of those things where I didn't want. I didn't want to like make a decision and then question why I made that decision myself. Yeah. Like I wanted to sleep at night, and that's kind yeah. of one I wanted for the guys too. Because a lot mm-hmm. of what you did, if you were like like a young GWAT guy researching on like officers and like kind of your roles and responsibilities from previous conflicts, especially like Vietnam and Korea, like you just you realize how ambiguous it gets real quick in the yeah. decision making process, especially when you're doing this whole civilian thing with children and like a Taliban that doesn't has unrestricted warfare. Exactly. I just. I'm not sure how other lieutenants handled it, but I just did it by becoming kind of like, not a douchebag, but I just very kind of like buy the book and follow the rules and wanted to make sure that everybody slept. Yeah. Yeah. We well, wanted to be an effective leader more yeah, than a friend. Yeah, right? maybe, kind of. Yeah. It doesn't always work out that way. You got to find that happy balance. <laughs> if I could go back and do it again, I'd be more friendly, less. Sure. Yeah, that guy. Less abrasive. Yeah. Sure. It's a good word for it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I use. I yeah. say abrasive. Yeah. yeah. My own yeah. personal skills are just like. Yeah. You know, I think you have great interpersonal yeah, skills. No, it about? takes time. I have a great time with you, you every time. time. It does yeah. take it really, time. It takes a couple of months. The first time people meet me, we're like, oh, that guy's a dick. Like, oh, <laughs> and it's intense. I was just like, this guy complains all the time. Oh, he's bitch, got one leg. Thing. It's like <laughs> a fucking thing. Like, oh, he's a we real got disabled one leg. person. Get over it. Like, yeah, you can't relate. Like, I understand. <laughs> you can't relate. <laughs> You are a pretty snowflake. It's okay. It's no, okay. Look, I'm missing a leg. Yeah. Some of us are missing a foot. Yeah. 
I, I was, was big born, difference. I was but born it's with a, birth uh, defects. Difference. I mean, ginger hair. You see yeah, this? no, I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, you, like, you have all things worse. considered. <laughs> yeah, well, I've only been an amputee for, you know, 10 years, yeah. 11 years. I've been a ginger like, my whole hey, life. I'm the same year as you, bro. Yeah. So we have the same exact what experience, right? What month did you right? get blown up, though? September. Oh, so you, like, I was already on my way out trying to get out by September. RT. Oh, well, I didn't realize how cool did you, you were. No, I, you're just on different rotations, man. We all get, we all rode the ride. <laughs> Yours was just a lot shorter. Because you're a BK. <laughs> How you know, long are you at the hospital for? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Who's interviewing Lou here? Let me sit in the middle so I can Bruce yeah. Buffer this yeah, shit. I know. <laughs> I know. We need, uh, we need one of those round girls. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're desk up and do yeah. AK versus BK. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a quick conversation. We all know how the pecking order goes. So. You know. Did you listen. say pecking order? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the only pecking order where it's good to be the low man on the totem pole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Hey, like yeah. everybody's talking shit. It's like. I have all my arms and legs. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted free shit. Right, that's what it was. Yeah, I, wanted, I, wanted. I was like Forrest Gump. I wanted to just go home early and eat ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, they would call this one of their million dollar ones. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen yeah. a penny of that million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got your TLC. So like you got your hundred grand though, right? Everybody gets their own. You know. Was it 25 or 50? It's less because you weren't a real amputee. It was, it was less because so it was the only a minute you become an AK, they're like, hey, here's $100,000. Hope your leg goes back. And you're like, it might. Well, for the people who don't know, there is a published list of the exact amount they will give you if uh, you get an amputation or lose a limb. Yeah, or an it's all eye. broken down. Yeah, by it's line broken item. down by monetary amount. If the eye is like a hundred, I got more money for losing my fingertip than a testicle. Really? Because this is like so. I no. thought a testicle was automatically hundred grand. So no, no, it. I wish. <laughs> it should be. It should be. Uh, <laughs> I think the way. So the way there's an army rating and a VA rating, okay. and the army rating only considers body parts that are required for your job function. So as an infantry officer, I'm required to have trigger fingers. Well, my trigger fingers are screwed. Oh, that's so I was yeah. compensated for these. I am not required, despite what you may hope in the world, to have a set of balls. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope my infantry officers <laughs> have a set of balls. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when it, it doesn't, you don't need to have a set of balls to be an infantry officer yeah. what they're telling you through the yeah. rating process. But no, like it, because it doesn't directly contribute to your ability to perform your role in the military, you don't get compensated for it. Now, the VA takes is a holistic, like, yes. hey, bro, you had balls before the Army, so we're going to give you <laughs> yeah. credit for the balls yeah. after the That's Army. That's fair. Yeah. There you yeah. go. You know, yeah. the standard for balls yeah. is 50%. So as yeah. long as you <laughs> came into the military with 50%. Well, it feels like, you know, like some of the way these GOs are acting in the world, like, it makes sense you lose your balls way before you retire, so. <laughs> they, they take those there. before you get the stars out yeah, of Yeah, well, I don't know. It's, it's, there's a sellout process somewhere where your sex and comes, comes with the first star. You guys can edit that part out. <laughs> A long bleep. A long Gives bleep. Me a bunch of generals just not getting it from the. We don't have ranks. generals listening to our so podcast. Maybe there might be one. Yeah. So give us and a, they're probably the cool one. Yeah, maybe. yeah, the one guy we're not talking yeah. about. <laughs> give us a brief. Can you give us a brief overview of like your injury, like what happened, as far as you're comfortable with? Yeah, no. So uh, we were on a dismount patrol to go secure and open a school in Afghanistan, uh, the Argon Dob, just outside mm. Kandahar. Uh, we went through. And uh, in route, we were ambushed, complex. It was a uh, daisy chain, seven 107s, Oof. followed by small arms. Yeah. Um, QRF was quick. Guy showed up, secured the site. It was all very professional. Went exactly the way it should. It, um, it was it was actually like scary how well it went after mm. everything went wrong. Especially for 2010. Yeah. Just well, learning. I mean, it was the Wild West in Afghanistan. A yeah. lot of people just like, you were there. They're like, hey, here's your ROEs. And you're like, well, okay. Thank cool. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. No, sure. no, no, no. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> it was the Wild West in 2010. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we all right. yeah. You know, and, and that's so funny that you mentioned, and I'll let you get back to the story, is is it does become this, this weird, you know, rules of engagement, hearts and minds thing while you're literally in the midst of like yeah. them trying to kill the shit right. out of you. Right, no, 100%. So like, and I, like I remember- everybody being around you knowing they're doing it too. <laughs> yeah. like, it's not like a dirty little secret. Go to any small town in America and tell a secret and see how fast those 20,000 people find yeah. out. Like, <laughs> tell me, tell me, you live in a mud hut in an Afghan village. There's only 5,000 of you. Yeah. You guys knew it was there. So yeah. like, it's yeah. just- like, get the fuck out of here. They know. Just weird, weird stuff that kind of impedes you from doing your job correctly. Right. Mm. Well, like, you know, it we, clouds it. Yeah. It really just yeah. it adds distractions and thought processes and layers. So it's bureaucracy. If you look at yep. the way we're doing things in this country, rather than simplifying processes and streamlining them and enabling people, we add <laughs> a add step more. Yeah. in hopes of, well, you know, if I was there, I would do this. Yeah, well, that was cool, sir. That's never led a platoon in combat. Not being a dick. 
<laughs> but like, remember that time we didn't fight wars through the eighties and nineties, and now you're a commander and like you're setting overreaching large scale. Like, like mm. it, war is war. Like yeah. it shouldn't be like, hey, go and just kill the bad guys. It's like, cool, that's the intent. But understand that like shit happens, and I think the generals know that. It's just the way that's communicated to the individuals is kind yeah. of misleading. Mm -hmm. So when they say, like, we're going to go focus on hearts and minds, what they're saying is, we should go in there and kill everything. <laughs> like, this is war. Like, yeah. not, not, not being weird about it, not being morbid, but, like, if you're, like, saying, my life is worth what we're doing, then it's absolutely worth me killing them for. Yeah. yeah. And, like, that's where people get disconnected. They're like, well, we want to win the war. We just... We just want to do it nicely. We want to win the war without killing people. Right. Is that yeah. possible? How, how do we do that? We, we win a war without everybody. <laughs> that's my with everybody. entire point. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and that's why it's lost on people. And they're like, where's the disconnect? It's like, well, it's just the fact that you don't understand what war is. Yeah. Like, I think we should. Disconnect isn't like, like our function doesn't change. I've, I've never seen in, the, in, in all of the history I've studied, you don't send ground troops somewhere to like, Bring peace. Yeah, you don't you don't send troops over to change people's minds. No, you send no. them over to look, kill enough we may of, be of the opposing opposition it, that they surrender. Or now look, no, no, stabilizing up. operations, humanitarian operations. We can send troops for that to secure sure. areas, That's but they're going for because it's, it's, it's security is required. Yeah, and like their intent still there for violence is their yeah. primary purpose. And I think people forget that like mm -hmm. you can't do violence nicely. Yeah, yeah. So that complicates war fighting. It does. Yeah, and it's a. Complex time too. I mean, there's a lot of other. No, we just make it too. complex. People think like, yeah. hey, well, this is this is 2021. We should be able to like be nice to people. It's like, yeah, yeah, but when and, they're not nice to us, we should kill them. And that <laughs> that that drives a great point. Is that it's fair? You know, everybody is living here in this country, very very safe. Mm -hmm. You know, without fear of getting attacked at any point in time. <sighs> And that's because the the men and women overseas are doing such a fantastic job at doing their job. Well, it's not even just them. Think about it. Before you get to the average civilian, you have the military. That's the outer layer. Those are all the combat people. And then mm -hmm. inside of that, you have the state departments. You have all of the agencies. Yep. And then inside of that, you have all of the state, local, LEOs, law enforcement agencies. And then mm -hmm. you even have social workers. Like, we have yep. so many layers to address people's needs economically, physically, socially, even mentally now because of mm -hmm. what's going on. And that yep. all has to do with security. Yes. So we've insulated this bubble seven or eight times before it even gets to the average True civilian. story. Yes. And like most of us don't live on the fringe. Like we're just visiting. Like this isn't like, <laughs> this isn't World War II. We didn't go fight a war for five years and maybe come home. Yeah. yeah. Like we went for a year long rotation. We knew when the start date, the end date was. Exactly. I think that's wrong. I don't think we, I don't think you win wars like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And like, if like you're sending people there, they have a mission, they go and they, well, we want to fatigue. It's like, well, the sooner the war ends, the better, you know, yeah. like send yeah. reinforcements and rotate people off, but understand the objective is like the military wants to use the skills that they were given. Not a single war fighter yes. joins going, I don't want to go to war. Yeah. Period in a story. Like, that's the, like, we are like, my function in the military was to go to fight, kill war. Yeah. Yep. And like that's something that you have to accept in the military. And then once you do that, then you understand your role and you just go to do it. Yep. Yeah. And whatever. And like the problem I think now is with generals and politicians, we're not being set up to win wars. We're just being set up to fight wars. Yeah. And that's what's causing the fatigue and the angst in the generations that they're currently dealing with that's not being addressed. And that's, that's what fair. gets back to the original conversation of just yeah. are always on the ground or confusing, convoluted, because convoluted. You know the C word I'm trying to throw yeah, out. Convoluted. There. Convoluted yeah. because, you know. People that have never done it are doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fair. I mean, I that's it. So, what do you what do you think it is the average civilian's train of thought? I I, I couldn't even begin to fathom. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like me. What's it like giving birth? Well, no. let me tell you. you know what I, mean? like, <laughs> I just learned a long time ago. There's certain things that I because you haven't experienced it. Yeah. So so, so that that drives my point. They haven't experienced it either. So why the yeah. fuck are they talking about? But that's it? exactly yeah. it. Because they're not. They're, everybody gets to a point where they yeah. just think they know rather than and they forget to learn. I Educate think. yourself. It's a level of complacency yeah. that yeah. just occurs in life with success or accomplishment or responsibility. It's just like look at the NFL. Like a dude signs a huge contract. He always has an off year. It's like, you made it, bro. Like, you're just naturally inclined to, like, the dorphins release, and you, yeah. you realize it settles in, and you're just like, I don't have to do this ever again. Mm. I'm good. And then, like, the next year, you have a rough year, and you realize that, like, life doesn't it. just maintain. Yeah. Like, you have to do it yourself, and that yeah. comes through performance. Yeah. Keep and I think that there's that anxiety where you don't have that immediate failure for people, especially in the military, on the officer side, with promotions and responsibilities. It's just kind of, it's not automatic. It's a process, but it's, you know... 
who knows who. Though. There's yeah. like a lot of bros. Like, hey, we both went to West Point together. Yeah. Like, why are West Pointers the bulk? Well, they're, they're, they understand the institution and they've been in it the longest. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't think there's bullshit there, but there's like, the, it's not- It's, it's a not, fraternity It's not the figure right? heads. It's the support elements that are being in place around them. Yeah. Yes. And that, I think that's where we're losing the battle. Yeah. I think that's a good perspective. Yeah. And I think that's reflected in our policy. <laughs> so ROE- Everybody executed very well that day. Yeah, night. so at that point, like, personally speaking, sat up, kind of looked around. Like, my leg was kind of, like, off and over there, so it was kind of like a drag and pull so what, in place. So what was that, dismounted? Like, what? Yeah, it was a dismounted patrol. We were doing this. We were going to go and secure school, mm -hmm. uh, clear IEDs. The, the Taliban had made it a decisive point for the operations in that AO. And mm -hmm. um, we were, like, in the bougie part of, of if there's such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> like the Beverly Hill. Yeah. Like we, we were where all the like Taliban senior leaders' families live, so they weren't trying yeah, to jihad yeah, yeah. in our backyard. Yeah. But they did and they came out, they'd done it a few times, and it was just because we were gaining ground and mm. we had a dope ass village elder that was supportive and you know getting assassinated. Like it's just like oh, that's where you're coming from in the country, and that's what we were working with. And yeah. it goes back, you know, we did everything right. It's just they had a say, and that say ended up resulting in me dragging that in my lap. Soldiers doing their part, maneuvering. Mm -hmm. We had medevacs. We had four Kiowas. We were dropping Kiowas to put wounded on. We had nine wounded, two KIA. Damn. Ripped through the middle of the element. And we spaced out extra because, you know, you got the vibes on the ground. You knew it was coming. Yeah. But like, we also had, like, a mission. And that's the shitty part about it. It's like, you know, you start looking at the decisions and something that I learned is, like, you can do everything right and the enemy still has a say. And, True. like, you have to be prepared for that. And that's what it was. And it was a long day, but it worked out as far as the circumstances we were operating in. Yeah. I mean, it's like, as I get older, I start to reflect back at like, what did that actually cost us? And like those guys and the, the way it impacts everybody's lives. And, you know, uh, Two Fury, the battalion I was in with 82nd, like we went into an AO that ripped out with 5-2. Like they were getting, it was a meat grinder. They lost all their MGSs. The strikers were getting tore up. Like, the, the, that unit was in there doing counter guerrilla, not coin. So we went in with a different mission set. And then the 101st ripped in behind us. Like, just that region of Afghanistan was just a fucking shit show. Yeah, fucking nightmare. Hornet's nest. And, like, every unit went in. And we did we did a little better than the unit before us. And the 101st had a little less casualties. And we sent guys back in. And we did a little better than that. It was just, it, it went green. It was just at what cost. <laughs> Did you know, with Black Rifle Coffee's Coffee Club subscription, you can get fresh coffee shipped to you every month? What? You don't even have to go to the store. Whoa. You don't even have to leave your bed. What? Wow. How did you get in here? You might want to go ahead and join the Black Rifle Coffee Club subscription before one of these guys shows up at your place. Yep. And that's kind of like the that reflecting part that each dude has to be able to like have and sleep at night with. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, we can get to that part a little bit further about yeah. introspection and, and recovery, but can you paint the picture a little bit about so you were dismounted patrol? Yeah. Did, did on, you step on the 107? No, or? it was a command wire. So okay. we're we're I'll just we're on a dismounted patrol, the units in front. Uh, the alpha team leader sees it. I'm not sure if it was a triggerman that popped up or if it was the initiation, but something off to the left happened. I think that's how I lost the trigger finger. You're, you're kind of raising your rifle, engaging, hitting the cheek, and yeah. like your guys are kind of reacting, and then they just kind of beat you to the punch. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of scattered, the dust settles. I remember doing four somersaults. Like I was in the air Damn. doing four somersaults, and I was. Did like, you stick it or what? No, well, I, mean, I, I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. No, I did on my butt. It was dope because I landed with my legs out in front of me and like, like sitting, like, and I was like, oh, that worked out. Oh, shit. Yeah. And uh, I remember thinking, like, in the air, like, it all went gray and I felt the, yeah. the spatial awareness and it all went gray. And I was like, oh, man, like, like you just got hit by an IED. Like, the first thing you think is, like, fuck, I just got hit yeah, by an yeah. IED. And it's like, yell IED. And it's like, hey, inner monologue kicks in, like, hey, asshole, you're 40 feet in the air. They already hit it. <laughs> yeah. Like, so then you land and it's like, you immediately training kicks in. So you, you kind of assess yourself. I saw my thigh was bleeding, but I could move my right foot. Mm -hmm. My right index finger was hanging. I looked over, I saw my elbow hanging out, but I still had movement in my arm. The glove was still covering the left hand, but these two, the index finger and pinky finger were dangling in an operative. Okay. Um, we started taking SAF, I believe. I reached over, tried to get my rifle. It was off and over there. I grabbed my leg at that point, pulled it in, and immediately 
was approached by a soldier mm. saying I needed a tourniquet, told him to give give aid and care to the, the, the other soldiers first. Okay. You know, and then you start just kind of seeing where guys are at, what's going on, who's fighting what battle, kind of trying to put pieces together best you can while not bleeding out. And that's when it kind of went internal. Like the AO was secured relatively quickly. QRF was only about 700 meters away. Oh, that's yeah, really nice. Yeah, it was around. We had trucks on scene, secured the AO, started dropping Kiowas to put guys on wings to fly out. Mm-hmm. And those pilots were actually like counseled because they dropped under 50 feet, which is actually illegal at the yeah. time. And those two, like they saved one of the two soldiers and then the other soldier just, you know, there's only so much you can do for yeah. them on the ground. Um Sadly, the guy that they had actually medevaced out on the side of that Kiowa ended up committing suicide because of VA policy and issues with prescriptions. Jesus. Like three years later. So it's just like you fight so hard to get guys through a situation only for them to fall victim to the, you know, the, yeah. the yeah, There's another the battle situation. that's going to be yeah, happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Continuous one. So, you know, we got off, like the, the objective, you know, we, we secured the objective. It wasn't horrible as far as like the process I can recall. Um, like, it's just self-reflection, internal yeah. monologue. At that point, I kind of laid down. My soldiers were around me. I remember the medic ran up, and I was like, hey, doc, how's it look? He's like, shit, sir, I didn't know you were hurt. I heard you yelling. I was like, yeah, yeah, but how's it look? And he goes, sir, like, I got to put a tourniquet on your left leg. And then he's like, and then I grabbed him by the chin strap, pulled it in. I'm like, doc, give it to me straight. How's it fucking look? Yeah. He goes, sir, your fucking leg's gone. I was like, I don't give a shit about my leg, dog. How's my fucking dick look? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that's everything. Yeah. Like for every was, single like, person. Bro, I was literally on the ground with my leg out in front of me, like looking down, and, and like I saw the blood pulling in my crotch, and yeah. I was like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. Don't make me look. I don't do it. Like don't I was like staring look. at my leg on the ground. No, like I remember my boot and like the top of my leg, and I was like, man, that looks. Like that's a weird movies. perspective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like still connected by like a tendon and stuff. Oh, like it's oh, kind of twitchy. And I was like, and I like, I was like fine dragging that, pulling it in. And I looked down, I was like, I just don't want to look, man. Yeah. Like I really don't. So finally, like he rips open, like said, sir, your, your balls are fucked, but your dick looks good. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, stop staring at my balls and save my life, doc. <laughs> <laughs> he like z- z- Zorro cut my sack in half, like because of the blood swelling from trauma. A oh, lot of shit. blood goes yeah. to the path of least resistance. That's your testicles when it's yeah. a lower body extremity injury. Yeah. You guys know that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so like they cut that open and then they put on tourniquets. I had three tourniquets on the left arm. It was that big, huh? Yeah, left arm. The, I lost 50% of my... <laughs> you didn't my, get that? Uh, no, I did. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was trying to like focus on the story. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and it kept slipping off. And like, I remember like thinking in my head, like it comes, like depending on your thought process, like everything's in my head, internal mm-hmm. monologue, thinking like, all right, take deep breaths, control your heart rate. Like, don't panic. Mm-hmm. Don't die like a pussy in front of the men. And like you say yeah. that to yourself over and over. And I know that last one sounds kind of funny, but it's like, really, man, like, if I'm gonna this go is out. it, bro. Yeah. Like, how you go out matters. Like, yeah. fucking, you're Socrates or you're not. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they'll tell stories about me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I said, like, and like, if, if I'm gonna go out like this, at least I'm gonna go out understanding that, like, fuck, man, my, my boot's still on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like some, like, nice, like, I don't know the way, like, if you died or not, but like, knowing how, like, at the, those last, because, like, I died, like, legit three times. Remember the process, like, organs shutting down, like, said, stomach resting on my spine, feeling my kidneys relax. And then you get to that point where everything's kind of shutting down and you're balancing it between your lungs and your heart. And your brain knows. Yeah. And you're, you're going through this process of, like, okay, like, you're only taking half breaths now, but I, you, you're only doing, you know, 37 beats a minute. Like your heart rate's a big thing. Like focus, like make sure you're getting oxygen, take deeper breaths, longer yeah. breaths, don't hold as long. Just like different things. And like I'm grabbing the dirt next to me to see how much blood is pulling around me to gauge how much blood I lost. And based on the size man I am, I know I can survive for about 20 minutes. <laughs> like I'm doing all these math calculations just based on what I know about myself. And then yeah. it's funny because my I was always like the, the big lieutenant. I was a 260-pound lieutenant. Like I was always the horrible runner in the battalion. Like, I was just not that guy. Like I like at the 82nd, they're like, oh, these are all prototypes. What the fuck is this going on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these are my soldiers yeah. and the tanker that got yeah. lost. Yeah. Who's this yeah. monster? The berserker. Yeah. yeah, it was just like, hey man, I, like they told me I had to run five miles under forty minutes one time. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, 30, thirty-nine fifty-eight. Fuck you. Oh, so yeah, it, no, baby. I was in like thirty-six thirty, and I'd never do it again. That's pretty good. That's no, it's yeah. pretty good. Especially being two hundred, I lost like two fifty. 
That was not an easy run, too. No, that course was like, fuck you, pay me. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it was. Up and down. Like, it was. You were going to suffer getting through it. Like, you weren't like... Oh, ranger school. Yeah, all oh, the throwback days back. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so the the whole process of like getting through it and like like it makes sense but like when you die it adds that perspective of like now you know man like you've been there you've done that you've rode that ride like what else are you gonna do like it's a peaceful process if you're doing it right i had done it right up to that point so now i'm just trying to make sure that i do everything i can with the years that i have until the next time it happens try not to make a habit of it you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not going for a, a fourth. Yeah, watch where you step, right, ladies well, and, and gentlemen. That's the thing. It's just like, hey, man, like, fuck. Even if you watch where you step, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, just know that this is gonna happen, and it's might something you have to deal with. Yeah, and like I tell people, like, man, being an amputee sucks, but if I'm gonna be an amputee. I definitely want to be an amputee in America. And like, oh, if I'm going to be an amputee now, in America, I it's a combat wanna, wounded veteran. I definitely yeah. want to be a combat wounded amputee. Yeah, in yeah and and you know, I feel bad for some of these guys too, like motorcycle accidents, diabetes, and stuff. And people will assume that they're combat related. Maybe maybe not so much anymore. But but in yeah. 2010, no, you remember that? Saying like, hey, thanks for. Your, I felt bad for him because it was like, and like the the. I talked to a buddy about this before, and he's like, hey man, like for me, it's nothing. Like this is my story. Like. If they make that assumption because I'm a young guy in shape, missing all my legs, I get it. But you tell, like, no, I'm not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was born like this. And then it's really just about being okay with that other people going, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, how did this happen? <laughs> I, saw, I saw this so amputee weird. at the airport that had a shirt that says, not a veteran. That's on fucking it. funny. That's <laughs> fucking know, funny. That's that makes sense. Like, people are like, yeah. why do you always wear shorts when you go to security? It's like, because I don't want to have the fucking, the one conversation yeah. of, hey, sir, you need to take your shoes off. No, I don't. Why not? Yeah. Oh, because I'm wearing, well, if you're just more shorts, we would have known. Like, fuck, man. Okay, I get it. Like, people are like, why do amputees not wear their pants? It's like, it's because it's easier just to have you see it and then know the thought process that's associated yeah. with it than, like, you just constantly, like, wonder or question <laughs> or, like, why just the fuck weird. is that guy parking in a handicapped spot? Why yeah. is that guy cutting the line for security? Like, oh, it's because he has one leg. Yeah. So it's just like, it's like, yeah. why, is he get, why, is he, why is that guy cutting the line at the airport? It's, it's because I'm going to set off every metal detector for fucking 500 miles. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. why. It's not, it's not because I'm more important than you. I'm not anybody. It's just... Hey, like, they're going to grab my balls and there's nothing I can do about it because I'm going through TSA. Yeah. There's some weird questions you get asked as an amputee. I, I, was, I was at the golf course once and this guy literally walks up to me at the pro shop and he goes, hey man, why do you wear two socks? And I literally looked at him and I said, why do you wear two socks? <laughs> and he looked at me like, how the fuck am I supposed to answer that yeah. question? So I said the same thing to him. I right. was like, well, you know, I, I wear it so that uh, my shoe slips on correctly. Yeah. Like, I tell him it doesn't squeak. Keeps my shoes clean. <laughs> like, what do you... Normally just spray squeak. some that's another WD-40 one. in there and I'm yeah. good to go. Yeah. Well, that's, people ask dumb shit all the time. What are some yeah. of your favorite dumb questions that you've gotten oh, asked? more like dumb statements too, though. Like yeah. people... I see it. Oh, <laughs> I was in Cleveland, and this is like... Uh, it's Cleveland. It's uh, Cleveland. So I'm in the gym, and this jacked black dude comes up to me. And I only mention his race because it's pertinent to the story. This jacked black dude comes up to me, and like I'm like... In jack my Black prime, came up to you? Jack Black. Jacked <laughs> black guy comes up to me. <laughs> jack Black. Jack Black. Jack black. Yeah. That'd be dope. Uh, I, I don't know what I would say to Jack Black. <laughs> Do better movies. <laughs> yeah, continue. Just continue. <laughs> yeah. I would make a talk about this one for like half an hour. Yeah. That's, that's his thing. Thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he comes up to me and he's like, hey man, like you're in really good shape for being disabled. I was like, thanks, man. You're like really wow. articulate for being black. <laughs> And he like looked at me and it was like dead uh, silence. And I was like, he's gonna punch me in the face. Yeah, just oh, to stare off face. between you two. And he like looked at me and he goes, Hey, man, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it like that. I was like, no, thanks for not punching me in the face for saying some racist shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, as fast as I could, just because I could feel, like, like the confusion yeah, saying yeah. it in the He's whole like, situation. But it's like, like, I've had people come up and be like, hey, bro, like, what happened to your leg? I'm like, hey, bro, did you masturbate in the shower yesterday? And he's yeah. like, uh, what? And I'm like, oh, shit, that's none of my business? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should ask, like, hey, what's your name? Yeah. I'm like, hey, yeah. like, what do you do for, like, pretend that I'm more than just a prosthetic because True a story. lot of people come up yeah. and they fixate on that and I, I tell people like girls will do it too and I'm like hey did I walk up to you and ask you what size titties you have? Yeah. She's like no. I'm That's like a good oh, point. 
Okay. Yeah. No, I walked up to you and pretended to care what your name was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> pretend. Pay me the same. Just, just give, give me, me the same courtesy. Give me twenty just seconds. Give me like everybody bitches. Like I want some foreplay before you go straight yeah. to my goods, yeah. man. Like come up to me and pretend to care about my name. Hey, bro, what's your name? It's Derek. Whatever you're like, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's the your way name, to do Steve? it. Okay. I got blown up in war. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Was that, a, was that, a, was, that wasn't what you were expecting? Yeah. You got it, you got oh, it. Hey, bro, I got attacked by a shark. Have you ever seen those great whites out in the south tip of Africa that jump out of the water and eat seals? Yeah, man, I got fucked up on a surfboard. Really? No, I was in war. Yeah. That's the best thing to do, 100%. though, is to fuck with people. Yeah. And they're like, you know, one of my favorite stories is like, oh, what happened to your leg? And I said, it was an unfortunate smelting accident. <laughs> and they literally looked at me like, because I just straight face yeah, so serious could be, you know? Yep. But I get to do that every day. Yep. So please, find an empty and ask him what happened yeah, right. to him. Do Especially it. Do this it. guy. Yeah. <laughs> All the way. Like I told one lady I tried to jump out in front of a bus and save a little kid and her, her first two questions were, oh my God, did the kid survive? And I'm like standing in front of her and I said, no, he didn't make it. She goes, you didn't even save the kid? <laughs> Dude, that is awful. She goes, what a fucking waste. <laughs> you know, when I was just like, man, that's sad. Like, didn't acknowledge anything. Like, just fixated on a kid. So I'm like, hey, I mean, whatever. It's about the kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just yeah. leave it at yeah. this. Yeah. There's been thousands. I think every amputee generally has the same stories because I, I think the kids are the best because kids are I don't the best. mind like the little kids. Like, you're supposed to stare. But if you're an adult staring, like, bro, you're in America. There's like a 97% chance that you've achieved like a seventh grade education. You should understand, like, you look at a guy, he's like, oh, he's it's not diabetes. <laughs> hmm. He's got a lot of military style tattoos. And yeah. I mean, he grows, he fits every description and stereotype possible for a vet, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. do that. My powers of deduction. Right. People are curious. Me. People are curious. I'm gonna start I mean, telling them UFOs, aliens, and shit. Because the government, the government said they're real. I was like, thank God the government validated it. Yeah. I got abducted and they took you know, my life for a fucking. Know, yeah. And how the fuck are we still not talking about this? I don't, we're gonna pretend like it's like we're pretending China's not a real thing. Yeah. Are they? <laughs> one of my uh, they? one of my favorite it's things. Transitory. <laughs> hey, I've never seen the ice wall surrounding Earth, so. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories for a kid uh, was, you know, I was at the gym and uh, he was staring hardcore. You know, you could just feel it oh, when 100%. someone's just staring They walk at in the soda machines. And he, he, he was looking at me and I just looked at him and I was like, shark attack. You should avoid the ocean. <laughs> Don't go in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his mom's freaking out. Me. Yeah, his mom's, his mom's like, like, oh my God. We're going to the beach on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Corpus Christi well, this I weekend. Mean, <laughs> have fun in the water. Yeah. Uh, Be safe out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, so you uh, did you recover? How long did that take, man? Oh, it's like it's like a lifelong thing. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Every day you get better. I, it's, I meant that in the sense that like I've had, like I did my initial like 49 surgeries the first him. First, like, s like five months, maybe. And then I had an infection, like, two months later that led to five more surgeries that put me at, like, 54. And I'm at 61 now, so then take those other seven, divide them. You know, I, I let's put it this way. I, I have surgery every, like, two years, basically. Like, still. Was, still. For, during like, that, ongoing, like, during that complications. Recovery, that was, like, every, every week you were in surgery. Yeah, so, like, uh, every... I was doing, like, for my initials, it was, like, Walter Reed has you on, like, a two- or three-day-a-week rotation based Jesus. on your injuries. So I was, like, three days in for, like, the first couple of months. And Fuck. then I was, like, in and out of consciousness. Like, the dirty little secret is you're on so many drugs at yeah. Walter Reed because of the things that you're dealing with that you don't really have a clear idea of what it is. Like, my experience versus what my family saw versus what actually happened. Yeah. is With the stress and the newness and the, the anxiety from everything going on, it takes, like, three or four months to just kind of get into a rhythm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um... And then, like, people don't understand, like, during that initial three or four months, like, it's easy when you're laying in a hospital bed and they're just willing you in and out of an OR every day, like, you're on drugs. Yeah. yeah. So, transitioning from, you know, the inpatient to outpatient, that's difficult because you still have this drugs, everything's still, like, you, you like, three months earlier, you got hit by a rocket. Like, yeah. you're not, like, living on your own. Yeah. Like, you're not able to, like, move. I can wipe my own ass. I still had metal X fixes in both of my hands and amputations. I still had... Like, bolus bags and yeah. all of my skin yeah. grafts were still, like, bleeding. So it's like, what, how much life are you actually supposed to have 
you're just a patient not laying in a hospital bed. You're a patient laying yeah. in a, at home. A, no, not even at home. It's at that point, it was a hotel room on mm. on the military installation in Malone House. You yeah, the Malone oh, House. Oh yeah. yeah. And then like because you got there like September, and then they just shifted you over to the new Bethesda like two months later, right? You were at the new Walter Reed. No, I actually went for to Walter Reed for a couple surgeries, then I went to the Center for the Intrepid, mm-hmm. so I was doing my stuff out of Bampsy. So, oh, okay. so and correct me if I <coughs> and go into a little bit more detail on your NOI, so osteointegration yeah. amputee, which is one of the few in the United States. There's like States. 70 of us now. Okay. But like uh-huh. I, but I'm three, I'm in my second to third year right now, so I'm like 20, 28 months in. Okay. So walk us through what that is, first and foremost. So osteointegration is actually... Uh, like, it's the next generation for amputees, I think, without any kind of major genetic or, like, biological breakthrough. But basically yeah. what they do is they cut open the nub, uh, they take whatever you have left of the femur, and they hollow that out, and then they basically just jackhammer a piece of titanium in that sits very snugly to the bone, and then they close it up. And then after 90 days, they open that back up, and then they detach all the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, and they mm-hmm. reattach it to make it more functional. Mm-hmm. And then they expose the abutment, and the abutment then slides in, and that attaches to um, the actual leg. Yeah. So out of the bottom of my nub, there is a metal titanium alloy rod that sticks out that I now connect directly into my prosthetic as opposed to a passive suction system that requires a socket, liner, yeah. and uh, you know a belt for someone of my length. Or pins or stuff. Oh, yeah, there's pins. <laughs> pins. There's it's that. annoying. It's, yeah. well, I, so, your your situation is way better. Yo, osteointegration. So like yeah. what it does is it directly, it makes, it's more anatomically correct. So the metal, the metal extension isn't around the nub. It's mm. in the center so of the nub. it's supposed nub. to be be the femur, right. the center of the gravity. So, exactly. For so there's skeletal no more system. Work. Like, yeah. uh, like sometimes when your socket gets loose, especially for AKs above knee amputees, like our nubs get condensed throughout the day. There's more soft tissue. It's more yeah. fat because of the atrophy from muscles from not being engaged the same way. Mm-hmm. And it causes there to be more movement. So every step is generally in the same place, but not the same place. Whereas yeah. with this, it's direct contact. Like this makes me feel like a BK. Like I yeah. can run with this. That's so, awesome. and, and, and well, and, and for like a non cripple, non amputee in the world, like AKs running are rare unless they have their full femur. Yeah. And then, like, the longer of an AK you are, the like more stability you have and the more yeah. strength you have. I've lost like 98% of my femur. I'm only an AK because of three centimeters of bone. Oh, and shit, that's really? HL growth that they modify and adapt and, and, for additional reinforcement. And that's, that's, you're still oh. dealing with infections all the time, too. So, 100%. like, so you're, Constantly struggling with that yep. as well, which revisions always. Well, one hundred percent. Like, yeah. and that's uh, like nub adjustments, soft tissue adjustments, bone HO growth. Right. So now with this, it's all stabilized. You don't have that. The muscles, mm-hmm. the muscle, it's all brought in. They, like I had like a nub of nub vasectomy where they like got rid of all the loose skin. They tied mm-hmm. in all the muscles. Oh, so it's it pretty up. now. It's oh, oh, it's so sexy. It's nice and so, tight. So yeah. walk me through <laughs> the. You know, since you don't have the ability for your skin to graph on to that yeah. titanium, mm-hmm. like what what's the deal with like cleaning that out and like infection rates and it's uh, so there's a perpetual open sore at the bottom of it, but mm-hmm. it, and there's a slight discharge, but it does get like you know generally like it's easy to maintain. I just don't yeah. go in brown water. Okay. That's like really like I, I I still wakeboard in the ocean. I still do all okay. the cool guy stuff. So you have to be cognizant about that. Yeah, like I mean I'm not floating in the in the the Rio Grande or or the Guadalupe. But yeah. if I am, I just put on a liner and then duct tape the end, and it makes it water. Uh, okay. okay. So okay. it's just sm- my com- the the compromises that I have to make now as an osteo integrated amputee is significantly less than the compromises I had. I was forced to like have as a socket-based amputee. Yeah. So, like, if it's like, okay, don't go in brown water, it's like, all right, well, you guys can go in brown water, but you still have all of the problems that I had yeah. would have going in brown water just with the nub cover on. Yeah. So, okay, well, I can take a shit without taking my leg off now. Most yeah. AKs, they have sockets and yeah. they take the whole the thing. Off. They got to yeah. take it off. That's crazy. You got to get undressed. And yeah. I mean, I cried the first time I sat on a fucking toilet after, like, it was, like, nine years of having to, like, literally, like, like, especially in an emergency situation. You're, like, running in. You're, like, I had to drop my belt, drop my pants, undo my belt around my hit waist, pull yeah. it around, throw my leg off, take the liner off, and then sit down and shit. Yeah. 
And <laughs> it was nice, man. I walked in and I was like about to crap my pants. I was like, I'm never going to make it. It's going to be one of those awkward amputee yeah. stories of shitting your pants. We've all been there once. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and like, Dave's giving and you like, a weird and, look. Like, yeah, it was like, like one once last week. Oh, thank God, <laughs> God I'm a BK, baby. Yeah. So, and like, you get there and then you sit down and like, I sat down and I was doing it and I was like, and it dawned on me, like, hey, yeah. bro, like, I made a post on the gram and everything. I was like, took a picture of my, my leg and I, and I was like, this doesn't seem, this is like a trivial thing that people do, mul- women do multiple times a day, men do once or twice a day and just <laughs> absolutely take for granted without realizing it. But yeah. the ability to sit down and just take a shit without worrying about my pants being in a pool of piss or my leg leaning yeah. on the wall or my liner falling on the ground and so, like just being able to sit down and like just shit, like made shitting fun again. Like, I was yeah. like, oh man, I'm gonna go poop for four hours all of a sudden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a normal man. Like a normal man. That's yeah, where you're yeah, yeah. scrolling done. That's, right. that's a, such a good point. I'm glad you brought it up is, is that do, people do take, you know, ambulation as for granted. Yeah. You know, just walking around normally. Like, for me, like, uh, you know, getting a glass of water in the middle of the night was just, <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like it's an you're ordeal. either hopping or you're like yeah. you're crutches I'm blow or out in a my chair. Knee. That's happened before. Bro, one hundred percent. Like hopping's dangerous, and like so dangerous. if you're an athletic amputee, you're, yep. you're lazy as fuck. You're like, whatever, it's a good name. Yeah, yeah. and then like I'll ten be fine. years later, you're like, oh, I shouldn't. Yeah, have and then you have to deal time. with the long term effects yeah. of that. Yeah, it's just called being young and dumb. Yeah, like, that's amputees or not. That's why you have all that introspection now. You can right. apply that See, for yourself. You would, you would think. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. Allegedly. A, a smart man yeah. would. <laughs> so, a so, strong man keeps learning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been obviously through, through the ringer a little bit. Done but a little bit it looks that. like you're on two feet. No pun intended. Yeah. So what are you doing now, man? Uh, so now I, I, uh, I work for Black Rifle Coffee in the fund. I do a little bit of marketing. Hell yeah. Um, the nonprofit space has been where I've been the last 10 years. I've worked, you know, uh, still giving back fitness. To, yeah. I mean, it's really about resourcing and I'm, I don't like to give speeches or anything. I'll do like non-motivational speeches where I like to give like a dose of real life to amputees and people like suffering and like that feel sorry for themselves. Sure. But I don't pretend like the, like if people are going to learn from me, they'll pay attention and learn at this yeah. point. I don't feel like I, I need to go out and advertise it or like, you're a realist about yeah. it. Yeah. And like, that's the thing is when people are ready, they'll find it. And then they, they'll ask questions or they'll engage or they'll, and most of it at this point, 10, 12 years in Google, YouTube, like platforms, it's, it's about focusing on what's next. And that's yeah. giving back and educating people on like different means of recovery, opportunities as a disabled vet, mm. opportunities for non-veterans and like ways to like reach out and community engagement, I think is the big thing and helping demystify being a cripple. Like yeah. I didn't, I don't remember growing, growing up, I don't remember seeing any like amputees or engaging any disabled people, like not in a meaningful way. I mean, I'm sure yeah. I saw a homeless disabled guy like in LA growing up or I'm sure, but I didn't have a family member. I didn't have somebody that was just like, just different. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's becoming more normal now because of the, the amputees that are existing. We're not just the diabetics and the motorcycle trauma guys. We're yeah. like the veterans. There's a little note. There's like a, not- a level of notoriety and like with how they lost it. And I think people are being more engaged and more comfortable, mm. especially with social media, having those conversations. Yes. Now it's just about facilitating them in a meaningful way where it just doesn't feel like it's a drive by and I'm used for like people's basic level of curiosity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. And right. that's, I mean, that's kind of the point of the show too, is we wanted to be able to open those conversations yep. with people who are unfamiliar I was in the military for over a decade and I didn't spend a whole lot of time around amputees, even mm-hmm. though I spent my entire job, my entire career picking them up. Right. right. Yeah. And right after it happened, but I never got to spend time with them after or understand, even though Dave's one of my best friends for the last almost 20 years now. Yeah. I never got to experience it and see what the day to day functions are like. And like, what's it like showering or mm-hmm. like getting up in the middle of the night? And how oh, does and that affect you? It's all the super small yeah. things. It's, yeah. And I tell people, a lot of guys in our community end up killing themselves because of the life. And it's not so much about, them struggling because of their disability. It's about the like nuance mm. around being disabled. Yeah. It's like everything, everything's you. always like three degrees, three degrees off. Yeah. And if you look at it, three degrees on a hundred meter trajectory isn't a big deal. But then you, you know, you do three degrees off for a year and it's yeah. a little different. Two years, you're a little bit more different. 10 years and you're in a completely different place than you expect it to be. Yeah. And you have to be able to mentally cope with that gradually over the years. And most people don't. Yeah. And it just catches them on like year six or seven or eight. And it's yep. an avalanche they're not prepared for. So yeah. now with Balanced Veterans Network, through the BRCC Fund and nonprofit organizations, 
we're giving guys avenues to come in and either learn the lesson before it kills them yes. or like learn, le- le- like look at AARs from guys that have like been there, done that and yeah. made it through despite. Yeah, yes. Resiliency can be taught. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's a very important thing, especially in that situation when everything is going to remind you if you're a fresh amputee, everything you do is reminding you, hey, I have an amputation. Hey, I've had this trauma. And trying to deal with that for a prolonged period of time, I mean, I, I can imagine it would be tremendously stressful. I mean... Well, we want to get to the... We want to build resiliency because it can be taught, but you yeah. have to be like... You have to have intestinal fortitude to fucking be even willing. start that journey. Yes, you do. Don't. Yeah. Because it's hard and then they have... You got to be in the right mindset. Exactly. Yeah. And like... I, I used to joke, like, I went from jumping out of airplanes and shooting savages in the face to, like, not being able to wipe my ass. Like, yeah. all joking aside, like, I just went from a basic functioning person in society to a negative contributor just solely based on disability. And that's mm-hmm. only, like, and that's, like, it's not that there's not value that I can contribute to society, but, like, all things being equal outside of America or even the human species, like, Amputees don't make it. Like, you're going to die. Like, <laughs> yeah. just, we're all going to kill ourselves. Yes. Like, there's no, I didn't mean to have a Joe Biden moment with the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, anyway, like, you just don't make it. Like, that's just yeah. a fact. And if you ignore that as an amputee, then you don't under, actually understand where the likely avenue you'll end up is. Yeah. And that's staying cognizant of it. Like, yeah, it's ever present, but it doesn't have to dictate the terms of your life. Does not. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dude, you're an incredible guy. You're probably one of the most real people <laughs> that I've True. met. Yeah, um, it's been awesome having you on the show. Yeah. I appreciate you guys having me and bringing me in and let me just yeah. rant for a little bit. Absolutely, dude, yeah. it's it's the best. That's what people want to see is they want to hear real life conversations, you know, right. from from people that have been through the shit. So thank yeah. you for coming on, man. Yeah, no worries. Thanks and for just being here. Self, selfless plug. Like I'm available on the gram. You won't find me because I'm shadow banned. Like <laughs> Derek is. underscore. Yeah, Carter. that's our next <laughs> yeah. question was where do we find you? Yeah, uh, if people want to reach out, can they? Instagram is yeah. my primary platform. D e r i c k underscore Carver. C A R Victor Echo Romeo because it sounds like a B when I talk in a mumbled voice. Is there a Bravo in there? No, yeah. <laughs> so uh, and then primarily there. Um, I don't really do social media. I don't put a whole lot of weight in. I just kind of do posts, and people either get it or they don't. Yeah. So it ebbs and flows. But that's kind of just the general like, hey, follow the fuckery. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. And it's there. And if you, you want some, yeah. yeah, you want some real insight. This guy will give it to you straight up, unfiltered. But yeah. Derek, you're you're an inspirational guy, really, and I appreciate you being you all the time. I mean, you, you might think you're abrasive. I think you're you're a great dude, yeah. but I appreciate that you're yourself all the time. No, I think you're yeah. a dick. Yeah, no, I, I totally, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm no, I 100 percent comfortable with it, yeah. but. At least I'm honest about it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I appreciate. I appreciate that about you. So. No, you guys are doing great things. Appreciate it. And, you know, anytime you guys, I'm all, always available to kill an hour or two with you. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. We'll have you back on, brother. Appreciate we got some, you guys. We got some more yeah. stuff to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us today, guys and girls. Uh, you know, whoever you are, however you identify. Thanks for joining Medifact Podcast. <laughs> Political correctness, motherfucker. We'll see you next time. Yeah, PC. You guys take I'm care. I'm from California. It's yeah. okay. No, <laughs> Oh,